I have been expanding my Acara ecosystem ever since I was introduced to it. So in this video, I'll be showing you what I've added, why I added it, and letting you know how it's been. Hello and welcome back. If you're new here, then just hello. In this video, I added the um, Akara M2 hub, some smart thermostats and temperature sensors to enable me not only to get a better view and understanding of my energy usage, but mainly to prevent a room from continuing to heat because the thermostat wasn't as warm as the room and thus wasting energy. That video is about 10 months old now and everything has been running flawlessly. So I decided to add more of a car as kit to my ecosystem. In the past 10 months, I have added <laughs> In the past 10 months, I have added their water leak sensors, but not for what you might think. Some roller blind controllers and the FP2 presence sensor. So allow me to explain what each of these is and how slash why I'm using them. Let's start with the water leak sensor. Currently 19.99 Great British Pounds, and you'll find a link for this and everything else in the video description down below. Thanks. These pair with the hub and then when strategically placed can detect water when it bridges the two little sensors on the back to then notify you of a link via their app. I put one of these under my bath for that exact reason, but I also modified one for another. I can't take any credit for this whatsoever, as I saw it in another video on the tube. I'll try and find it and credit it down below. But by using this pressure pad from Amazon, 26.95 at time of scripting, and connecting two of the cables, one to each sensor thingy, I turned this water detector into a smart pressure pad. And why did I do this? Well now, when I sit on my sofa, my smart home knows this and will then conveniently ask me if I want to watch TV. And, oh really? My d -bot's still alive. If I say yes, an automation runs to turn my TV on, start YouTube, dim the room lights and turn on the Hue Entertainment area. Very cool, even if I do say so myself. Next up, I added the Akara Motion Sensors. This is their Gen 1 version, which is currently 1999 Great British Pence. I have one of these at the top of my stairs and one at the bottom, so that if motion is detected and it's dark enough, then the LED strips down my stairs come on to guide the path and, and then they just go off after. Simple but effective. With the success of these previous items, I then branched out to their roller blind shutter controller motor thing, which as you've probably guessed, opens and closes your blinds. And it does this by pulling the beaded cable in either direction. I haven't had a single issue with them as of yet. They work perfectly and the battery has lasted a couple of months so far without needing to be charged, which you can easily do with a battery pack. To be fair, it's even simpler just to slide them off and remove the cord to then charge them elsewhere anyway. The final addition so far to my Akara ecosystem, which completed my, even if I do say so myself, awesome bedroom automation was their FP2 presence sensor. This thing though is not cheap. Currently costing 82.99 great British pounds, which is a fair chunk of cash. A normal motion sensor wouldn't have worked in my bedroom as I needed automations to run based on my presence in the room as when I got in bed and didn't move, a motion sensor would just think no one was in the room and start off all the automations. But the presence sensor not only knows when I'm in the room, but, and this is cool, it also knows where I am in the room. Friggin' awesome. This then means if I walk into my bedroom to sit here and read, it knows where I am in the room and turns on the lights just in this part. And that's because I've defined this area as a zone within the Akara app. As soon as I leave the room, it knows no one is in there and turns off everything. It's very clever, but the pièce de résistance is if I get in bed. The present sensor knows I've got in bed because of a zone defining my bed, which then triggers my bedtime routine. Oh, and I love this. I'm so sad, but I actually love it. What it does is it sends me a notification asking if I'm going to get in bed. If I reply yes, 
This then sets off said bedroom routine, which closes the curtains and blinds, brings my TV up out of the bed and turns it on, starts YouTube, turns my aircon on and sets it to cold and a slow fan. And then it then sets all my house alarms to bedtime mode and arms my cameras. And then finally, it tells Home Assistant I am in bed so that no other routines within that room will run because I clearly need that beauty sleep. So there you have it, the four additions in my Akara ecosystem that I've installed over the past few months. All added via their Akara M2 hub, so all compatible with Mrs. A except for the FP2 sensor which isn't added via the hub and connects directly to your wireless but still works within the app and with Mrs. A. All of the products I've talked to you about I've chosen for specific purposes and have flawlessly worked without error since being installed. And honestly, I don't think I can say that for anything else in my smart home. The water leak sensor hack thing, although I've used it on my sofa, has so much more potential to be used for automation. So let me know what you would do with it in the comments down below. Motion sensors are great, but what I will say is that when using them in Home Assistant, although they have a lux meter, built in, Home Assistant can't read this as a variable. So I'm unable to set up any automations using the luck levels that the, can't say it. Any automations, the Lux levels these provide. Apparently that is fixed in the newer version. So maybe I shouldn't have been a cheapskate and maybe I'll give one of those a try next time. And out of all my Akara ecosystem at the moment, the star of the show has to be the FP2 presence sensor. It was easy to set up and even easier to use. Again, one thing I will mention is that it forces you to add it into Apple HomeKit during the setup when using an Apple device, which is really annoying because I had to add it into HomeKit and then remove it after in order to be able to add it via HomeKit bridge into Home Assistant. Does that make any sense? But apart from that, it's been great. And when combined with Home Assistant, it allowed for some pretty cool automations. So my Akara ecosystem has grown and I'm still loving it. I'm excited to see what I add next. And if you're watching this Akara, hit me up. I can't be paying for much more. If you have any questions about anything I've looked at in this video or anything else for that matter, then please do let me know in the comments box down below. And uh, whilst you're down there. That's what she said. Please do consider liking the video, even if you didn't. Subscribing if you aren't already, hit the bell to get notified when I upload new videos because it's gonna help Akara send me more free stuff to play with and make videos about. So yeah, thanks and uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye internet. Put this chain on me, like they all hate on me. Don't bring that rage on me Why they throwin' shade on me